when you write a number like this one, now you and I will always say 25.3216, something like this. Now, if you remember from before, to the left of the decimal point, we call this what? The ones. We call the two, the digits here what? The tens. So what about to the right of the decimal point? To the right of the decimal point, update that list here. Enter. Where is enter? There we go. To the right of the decimal point, we call this one what? The tenths with the TH. Always TH. This is the hundredth. What comes after the hundred? Thousand. So this is the thousandth. And what comes after the thousandth? Ten thousandth. We have to know the place value of each digit. For color reason, you'll see that when we start rounding, they're going to say round to nearest tenth. That means one decimal place. Round to nearest hundredth. That's two decimal places. Round to nearest thousandth. Three decimal places. But there is no one. I don't know if you noticed that. Another thing, too, in really in decimal, you and I will always say point. There's no such thing as point in math. The decimal point is known as and. So when we write the number, we go and. So that would be 25 and. Then we go to the decimal portion. But we always say point, point, point. That's what we do. But in math, it's really and. So the first section here, we might ask you, like, what digit, like, I'll put this example. Um, I'll put a few of them. Let's say I give this number, 0.134. And notice sometimes I go zero point, or sometimes I go without it. It's the same thing. 92.588. Zero point six zero zero four three seven. What digit in the hundredth place for all of them? Hundredth. The three for this one, yes. The eight for this one. The zero for that one. What digit in the tenth place for this one is the one, for this one, five, for this one, six, tenth, the first, the first to the right of the decimal point, Jamie. Hundred thousandth. Hundred thousandth. Well, I don't have a hundred thousandth here. Right? Mm -hmm. I don't have a hundred thousandth here. This one, I have a hundred thousand. Which one? That's the tenth, hundredth, thousandth, ten thousandth, and the three is what? The hundred thousandth. So these don't have hundred thousandth. If you want, you can make the number bigger because we know in math, especially with decimal numbers, if you really want to answer, if somebody like say, okay, you have to answer that question. You can't leave it blank. You can't say no answer. When you have 0 0.134, here's the good news. You can add as many zeros as you want to the right of the number and will not change the value of that number. So if you want to take this and add a lot of zeros to it, go ahead. Add as many as you want to. Now, if I ask you what digit in the hundred thousandth,
Which one? The tenth, hundredth, thousandth, ten thousand, hundred thousand. That's that zero. But you can add as many zeros as you want to the right of the decimal point without changing the value of that. And that really comes in handy when you're comparing numbers. If you are comparing decimal numbers, if we ask you, okay, which one is bigger, which one's smaller? So I'll jump to that topic. So if I said to you, which number is bigger, 0 0.2 or 0.19? Well, they're not the same. Well, if you're rounding, that's right. But we're not rounding here. So I'm not rounding. So which one? Well, let me give you a different story. Let's say you went to the dentist today. Go to the dentist. And before you get there, the dentist will pull your chart out. They go, oh, Mr. Haddad's coming to see us today. And after him, Mr. Hayward is coming. Or Mrs. Hayward, I don't know, we'll go. Uh, Debbie. And after we leave, they say, can you go alphabetize these for us, please? Put them where they belong. So how do you compare which one goes in the front, which one goes in the back? In the back? You start by looking at the first digit. You go, well, in this case, the first character. Well, that's the same. H is the same. So what do you do? You go to the next one. Oh, that's A, that's the same. Then you go to the third place. You have a D, you have a Y. Which one goes in the front? D. The D. So Haddad goes in the front, Hayward goes behind. Yeah, because now when you look at this, 0 0.2 and 0.19, as I said before, you can make them the same size if you want to. You can make the two is two zero. But you don't have to. Now, start with the first digit on the left here. Two and one, which one's bigger? Two is bigger. So 0.2 is bigger than 0.19. Point zero one and point zero zero nine nine nine. Which one is bigger? Again, we can put them on top of each other so we can look at them. And you line the decimal point. Now you can make them the same size or leave them alone, but when you look here, the second digit, the first one the same. The second one, one versus zero, which one's bigger? One. The one. So 0 0.01 is bigger than 0 0.0099. another example. And 0.75. Again, put them on top of each other. It's easier to see that way. Seven is the same, we go to the next digit, two versus five. Five is bigger. So five is bigger, which means the two nine is smaller. Point two nine is less than point seven five. The comparing part is not bad, you know, just like alphabetizing, really the same idea. What about changing from decimals to fraction? I'm going to write four or five decimal numbers and we'll change them after. 0 0.025, 0 0.19, 0 0.4, 1.2, 2.5, 
2.36. All these are decimal numbers. Now I want to change them to fractions. It's going to, all going to be fractions. I'm going to begin by writing the number without the decimal point. If I erase that decimal point, that number becomes what? 25. So that's where you write on the top. And what are you going to put on the bottom? One. Try again. Notice how many digits you have to the right of the decimal point. How many digits? Three. three. That's three zeros. One with three zeros. So you're always going to count how many digits to the right of the decimal point and add that many zeros. Then you're going to simplify your answer. Let's simplify it. Can we divide 25 and 100 here, 1,000? Yeah. By what? By 25, that's a 1. By 25, that's a 40. So 1 out of 40. Now to prove that, I'll take my calculator here, and I'll go 1, turn it on first, clear it, 1 divided by 40. Ready for the answer? 0 0.025. Let's try the 19, or 0.19. Write the number without the decimal point. 19 over what? 100. Why 100? You have two digits to the right of the decimal point. Can I simplify that? No. This one, the point 4, write the number without the decimal point. 4 over what? How many zeros? One zero. One digit? One zero. Can I simplify 4 over 10? Yes, to what? 2 over 5. Yes. This number. 12 over what? 10. Again, you only count the digits to the right of the decimal point. How many digits to the right of the decimal point? 1. How many zeros? 1. Can you simplify 12 over 10? 6 over 5. Last one. What is that going to be? 236 over what? 100, yes. If I divide by 2, that's a 50. Divide by 2, 118. I'm not done. Divide by 2 is 25. Divide by 2 is 59. 59 over 25 when you simplify it. I'm going to show you a different way to do the last two. The last two are really mixed numbers. What does that mean? It means you have one and two tenths. That's what you have. That's the tenth location. Can you simplify two tenths? To what? One and one fifth. So now notice if I change this from mixed number to improper fraction, you'll have what? 5 times 1, 5 and 1, 6 over 5. Is that the same answer? Yep. A little bit easier probably. This will be what? 2 and 36 over what? How many digits? 2, that's 100. I can divide 36 and 100. I can divide them both by 4. That's 2. By 4, this is what? 9 over 25.
if you want to change it to a mixed number, I mean, uh, from mixed number to improper fraction, what do you do? 25 times 2, which is what? 50 plus the 9, 59 over 25. Same exact answer. So some people will do them this way. Some people will do them that way. Whatever you feel at ease with. I'll try a few of them. A few more. And I'll do them both ways. Two point seven one. I can write that 271 over what? 100, Jamie, yes. And if you can simplify it, go ahead. The other way, you can take it and write that as what? 2 and 71 over 100. Can I simplify 71 over 100? No. So 100 times 2? 200 plus 71 over 100. Zero point zero 0.08. Well, this is what? 8 over 100. Two digits, two decimal places. We can divide by 4, that's what? 2, 25. You can't really write that as a mixed number because you don't have to, have, to be a mixed number, that digit to the left of the decimal point has to be more than 1, or 1 or more, more than 0, 1 point something. But it can't be a 0, that means you don't have a whole value there. So that's how we change from decimals two fractions. Now somebody brought the rounding up there. The rules for rounding doesn't change. Five or more we add one under five we drop it. So for example if I have a number like this 1.3254 that's my number and the, the top is round to nearest And I'm going to say tenth here. Then I'll do the problem with what? Hundredth and next to it. Thousandth. So let's look at it nearest tenth. There's my number. One point three two five four. Where is the tenth location? The three. Remember, we underlined that. That's how we did it before. And we looked at the digit to the right of that. To the right of that is the two. Is that five or more? No. Drop them. 1.3. Now the hundredth. 1.3. Two, five, four. Where's the hundredth location? Right here. Is this digit five or more? Yes. Add one to this. That'll be what? One point three three. Thousand. One, you can. 1.3, if you or take the original number, the thousandth right here, right? Is that five or more? No, we drop it. But now you brought a good point here, Angel. You said you can't. Not in rounding. Let's say my number is 1.89. 
and I want to round that nearest tenth. I go, well, nearest tenth, that would be what? 1.9. There's the tenth, you look at that number, is that five or more? Yes. Nearest hundredth, hundredth means how many digits? Two decimal places. So that would be what? 1.89. But now let's say they ask you nearest thousandth. Yep, you have to add a zero. You have to put that zero down. Keep in mind, there's as many zeros as you want. So when they say round your answer, nearest thousand, and if you put 1.89, by the way, the two are equal. These two are exactly the same value. But if they said nearest thousandth, and you gave them that number, they will mark it wrong. Just like if they said nearest hundredth, and you give them that number, they will mark it wrong. This one to nearest thousandth, this one to nearest hundredth. So make sure you know the difference which way they want it. So rounding doesn't change. And you might see also, I didn't see it in our book here, sometimes they say estimate too. Again, when you're estimating, you're trying to make the math easy enough to do in your head without a calculator. So you want to round the numbers. So if I'm walking up and down the grocery store, look into a shop here, and I'm buying a uh, milk, $2.79. That's the milk. I buy that. Uh, I need uh, small coffee there. Coffee is, let's say 129. Next one, I go, uh-oh, I see this. Uh, this is 184. I need that too. Keep walking. 213. If I said estimate, how much would it cost you to buy? To buy all four of them, how much would it cost you? Now, in your head, you got to start rounding. You got 279. That's what? 3. You're not going to use 2.8. Then you got to do the math. Oh, that's almost a 3. This one is what, roughly? That's a dollar. That one is what? Two dollars. That one is what? Two dollars. So estimate how much? Three and one? Four. Four and four. Eight bucks. If you get ten bucks with you, you're on the safe side. If you get nine bucks, you're okay. Notice if you add them, you're not really that far away from the eight. You might be off by 15, 20 cents. How do grocery shopping? I do the opposite. I add. Well, because you don't want to run over. You want to make sure you have enough money, you know? But if you notice, the exact number is 8.05, so it's $8.05. But I know why you add up, because you want to make sure, uh, that'd be 8.05, so I only got eight bucks. And you go, I'm not gonna stand there and just I'll take something out. So to be on the safe side, you build that little cushion there. But normally, if you're estimating the cost, that's what we do, go, that's almost eight. I'm not that far off that number. I'm just trying to get an idea what, how much would it cost me to buy them. So if I have 10 bucks with me, I'm not going to worry about being 15, 20 cents over because I got 10 bucks. I can buy these. But that's the whole idea of estimating. You can do the math in your head quickly. And I think that's the end of section uh, 3.1, introduction to fractions. So I'll stop this one.